our final Jacaranda reader of the residency, Daniel Reinhold. The rhinoceros is outside to hold it down. They're going to do their best. The rhinos. Okay, well, God bless them. Um, in 1986, I did a reading, and I had a friend do the publicity. And when I did the reading, I forgot to thank him. And I think he's still mad at me, so I keep this very general. I'd like to thank my family, my friends, all of the Antioch community, the sun, the moon, the rhinoceros spirit, wherever it may be. Okay, <laughs> Proteus and the Marlin, for Richard Brodigan. Felicia slept with the stuffed Marlin. It was seven feet long and shiny blue. She had been sleeping with it since 1968, when her boyfriend decided he was the Greek god Proteus. He painted himself blue and tried to fly off the Golden Gate Bridge. Shortly after that, she spotted a fish in a second-hand store in Grants Pass, Oregon. It was blue and it reminded her of her boyfriend, so she took it home with her in the Greyhound. It was too long for her bed, so she cut a hole in the headboard. On Sunday, she polished it with Johnson's floor wax so that it would always be shiny blue. After about a year, she burned her autographed copy of The Old Man and the Sea, and she never slept with anyone else again. Um, I had a misspent youth, which is, I'm sure, some surprises you. <laughs> that's, how I, that's why I ended up doing this, I think. The first time I saw hummingbirds. Caught in the rain next to the ranger station in Eagle Nest Lake State Park, Northeast of Taos, New Mexico, I left a lover and a bedroll in Santa Fe. Got a ride to Denver with a Latina hooker. Her drunken boyfriend passed out in the front seat of her black Oldsmobile. Made it to Wichita, got junk and crazy on Librium and Leafrow Milch in a stranger's basement with a girl I met hitching on I-70. 20 miles east of the Kansas state line. <coughs> Spent the next day at the Maverick Bar, getting buzzed on Coors, sweltering in the still air of the Midwest summer heat. Took a cab to the airport at five in the afternoon. Boarded the airplane with a backpack and a bottle of Jim Beam. 30 years have passed, and they still remember the first time I saw hummingbirds seeking shelter from the rain in the ease of the blue spruce hut, their seemingly weightless bodies darting back and forth in short, frenzied flight. And now true to the, uh, um, true to the evening, uh, 13 Ways of Being Rhinoceros. Um, you poets probably know um, Wallace Stevens wrote 13 Ways of looking at a blackbird. And uh, there's a New Orleans poet, and there's a reference to him in here, uh, Edward Maddox, and he wrote 13 ways of being looked at by a possum. So I'm reading 13 ways of being a rhinoceros. One, under a tent on the Serengeti, eating beluga caviar and drinking Corbel champagne, there is a rhinoceros in the distance. Two, staring at the full moon, I see not a man, nor a rabbit, but the shape of a rhinoceros. Three, horny as a rhinoceros in rut. Could have been a clever pun. If it weren't for the intonation, no one is laughing. Four, her pinata was shaped like a rhinoceros, and when she whacked it hard with a wooden broomstick, it exploded like Asbury Park on the 4th of July. Five. Four rhinoceroses sit around a table playing poker. They will never be a postcard or a velvet painting on anyone's wall. Six, after the Battle of Armageddon amidst the rising smoke and the smell of burning bodies, a lone rhinoceros stands. Seven, from the classified section of Soldier of Fortune, I order the spurious rhinoceros horn. 
I know I will not be disappointed. <laughs> Eight, at Little Bighorn, there was not a single rhinoceros present, and yet, picking, <laughs> picking the ticks from the rhinoceros' hide, seven blackbirds circle and dance, circle and dance, circle and dance. Ten, she burned one green candle, candle and dreamed of the savannah of gazelles galloping, zebras grazing, the rhinoceros stamping its feet. And then she drew a single tarot card from her scarlet red pouch. Her wheel of fortune was reversed. 11. At the annual rhinoceros Mardi Gras extravaganza, they dressed in tuxedos and ball gowns. The rhinos danced with such agility and grace. 12. In the courtyard of the maple leaf, Amidst the plethora of possums, one can hear in the distance the thundering of hooves. Thirteen, if a person doesn't move when they see a rhinoceros, the rhinoceros cannot see them. Holy shit, grab the baby. <laughs> Hurdy-gurdy man. Uh, I, uh, I was in Mexico in June, I went to a sweat lodge, I've been to hippie sweat lodges, but this was very ritualistic and very different, and uh, it uh, was quite the experience, hurdy-gurdy man. The all-night pawn shop in Alvarado Street offered me 150 bucks for the piece of moon I stole on that first fragile night we met after the sweat lodge above San Miguel. I was passionate about selling it, driven like a junkie on a mission from God, sweating and fidgety, shaking like a leaf. Pardon the cliché, I am delirious, searching for an answer to a question you had asked me in despair. You seem troubled by the enigma and the paradox, the terrible ennui and angst of the fallen, angels in the rough you call them, prisoners of their own desires. I am indignant and yet pious as I barter with the pawn breaker. I want 250 bucks minimum for that stolen piece of moon. He says 200 bucks tops. It is a Mexican standoff. Again, pardon the cliche, I am now forsaken. You have become ambivalent, deliciously ambiguous at best. After those two years we spent in Algiers, we were once motherfuckers for the cause, troubadours of the tenuous night, suck you by for freedom. I was never a pantheist or a panhandle, though I sold myself for silver and gold. I am no Judas. All this rigmarole started when I poisoned you in Marseille with botulism and grace. It was before the cabaret and the hurdy-gurdy man was pissed. He was always pissed. Light a candle made of earwax and alfalfa. Let it burn until its flame expires. And then I'll promise you anything I'll promise you our little piece of moon. I'll promise you anything. I'll promise you rain. Uh, I, uh, at Antioch, I, I embraced the prose poem. I've written many, many, and I probably write at least 60% prose poems. Uh, I have this backwards. Okay. Pinata. A man lived inside a woman who lives inside a shoe. The shoe lives inside a pinata. The pinata lived inside a brownstone on New York's Upper West Side. The brownstone was once owned by Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby has nothing to do with his poem other than he lived in the brownstone where the pinata now lives. The pinata only goes out at night and steers clear of Mexican neighborhoods. The shoe inside the pinata is a Nike. The shoe was once worn by Alberto Salvador who was the one-time record holder of the New York and Boston marathons. The woman who lived inside the shoe was not the one in the fairy tale, nor was she old. Her name was Blanche, and she was a transvestite who once did Patti LaBelle's hair. The man who lived inside Blanche was so small, he was almost invisible. But he did love shoes, tiny, tiny shoes. <laughs> Another one in the same vein broken heart. Mm -hmm. There was a man who had a broken heart. It was so broken that it shattered into hundreds of pieces. It was much like smashing a head of iceberg lettuce that had been dipped in like liquid nitrogen, except that the pieces of his broken heart were lodged, in, lodged inside his belly. 
His belly was very big because he drank lots of beer. He drank lots of beer because he had a broken heart. He read an ad in the Village Voice, he lived in Manhattan, that touted a doctor in Guadalajara, Mexico, who claimed he could replace both broken hearts with pinatas. First, the man had to have the pieces of his broken heart removed. It took seven women seven hours to extract the pieces of the man's broken heart. The women used steel tweezers and a Hoover vacuum cleaner. The doctor, who also sold wool woven baskets to tourists, replaced the man's heart with a very colorful pinata. The pinata was painted with the most electric reds, yellows, and blues. The pinata looked like a parrot. The man believed that the pinata that replaced his broken heart was a gift from God. He knew it was very fragile, but he was comforted by the single fact that if anyone ever broke his heart again, it would explode with trinkets, baubles, candies. He was comforted by the single fact that his heart would break in the most wonderful of wonderful ways. Constantinople. She said, build me a bridge from Marquette, Michigan to Constantinople. Build it with chicken wire, eagle feathers, carnugo wax. Build it with your own hands, with your own tears and toil. Build it in the dark of night, in the shadow of yourself. Build it just for me, and I will stay by you until the long night takes us, knowing freedom is just a few steps away. I'm going to do that for heart. Um, the one next to the last love poem. That summer, there were promises. You weeded the asparagus. I painted the barn. And now, that's <laughs> all there was needed to be said. And now I'll finish with this uh, poem, 13 stanzas. My brother died in 1975, and it took me... I mean, I tried many times to write a poem. It took me up until about a few years ago, a couple years ago, that I could finally do that. And uh, this is that poem, 13 stanzas. We just set a frost last week, but it has been muggy for May. There's a male cardinal in my bird feeder, and the dog is sleeping in front of the air conditioner. I'm going to see a movie about Philadelphia. Sipping a large iced hibiscus tea with sugar and lime, I wonder if there will ever be enough gas until Sunday. Tomorrow I'll go to the farmer's market. I am 55 years old and my brother is dead. It still gets cold here in June at night, though I got sunburned on my left side just driving around. The neighbor's dog took a dump on the front lawn today. I'm sure he won't clean it up. I am 22 years old and my brother is dead. I'm drinking Pernod on the rocks, then going to see a French movie about nothing. I wonder if I'll get a hard on at the theater. It gets hotter than the devil's dick here in July. I spend my afternoons in an air-conditioned bar. I'm going to see a movie with Ruth Gordon. She bites Ryan O'Neill on the ass. I'm 37 years old, and my brother is dead. My cats spend most of the day in the bathtub. The faucet drips just slightly. I drink Hugo Libres and wonder if Lou Reed ever slept with Andy Warhol. In August, Cape May, New Jersey gets really crowded. All the Catholics, Irish Catholics go in the water on the 15th. It was the Feast of the Assumption. I go in up to my knees. I wear a black Speedo even though I weigh 275 pounds. I wonder if I'll ever get a heart on again. I am 67 years old and my brother is dead. I drink Diet Birch beer. There will be fireworks in Wildwood tonight. The Rio Grande is a trickle in September. The nights are pleasant, and I leave my window open when I sleep. I am 29 years old, and my brother is dead. My lover keeps a live snake in a glass box in the bedroom. We get stoned every day before breakfast. She lights one green candle at sunset. 
We jig little shots of strained alfalfa and wheatgrass. We are always going to go to the movies in Albuquerque. It's cool enough to wear my fade of gen faded denim jacket by October. I'm going to see Fantasia with my bass player. We will chew peyote buttons and wash them down with cold grapefruit juice. It will cover the taste of metal. We will watch the movie seven times in a row. I will watch the screen dripping like an ice cream cone in front of me. I will wonder if the girl in the front aisle is possessed. I'm 17 years old and my brother is dead. In November in New Orleans, the weather is almost always pleasant. I slept until 3 p.m. and keep a bottle of Stolichnaya in the freezer. We will see Dr. John tonight down by the river. I am sure you are pregnant, but wonder if you will tell me. I'm 42 years old and my brother is dead. We own a parrot named Elvis. I have promised to take you to the Trocadero Ballet. Early in the day before I start drinking, I can sometimes get a hard on. In December, it is always rainy. Sometimes it snows though, and they go around the neighborhood making extra money. My cat has had another litter of kittens. I want to keep the calico or the white one, which is probably deaf. I am 12 years old and my brother is dead. I drink cold seven up from a can. I'm going to watch The Grinch on TV. I wonder if Sandra Kelly will kiss me on the bus trip to Washington, D.C. I am having wet dreams. After the Sugar Bowl, the tourists are gone for the rest of January. I spend my time in the bars on Lower Decatur Street. I have not seen a movie in six months. I never crossed canal. I snort way too much cocaine and amyl nitrate. I flirt with the drag queens that work in Iberville. I once met Divine in the laundromat. I think I might be Jesus. I am 33 years old and my brother is dead. The February nights drop to 20 below in Northern Ohio. I'm 20 years old and my brother is dead. I am in the third year of college. I get drunk on purple Jesus every Friday. We all drop green goddess acid and go to the Little Art Theater to see pink flamingos. I am studying Gregory Corso. My girlfriend has a pet ferret she keeps in her purse. I am almost sure we shouldn't have done quite so much acid. She calls me Sugar Mountain. I get a hard on at the drop of a hat. In March, the crocuses and daffodils are blooming. The roses need pruning and mulching. I am 78 years old and my brother is dead. I keep a male betta in a bowl. I have named him Blanche. I play pinochle on Thursdays. I drink a double prune juice every morning. I wonder if I'll wake up tomorrow. Either way, I don't really care. I have cataracts and just listen to the TV. I am 37 years old and my brother is dead. In April, the Tiaos and the Quats are thriving. We went dancing tonight at Tipitina's. Dr. John was playing until midnight. We will make love on your balcony tonight. I know you won't get pregnant. We'll drink lukewarm Perrier from plastic bottles. You will revert vetiver oil on our bodies. You will make sure I get a hard on. It's full spring in May. I sit outside the local wine bar and sip a Campari and remember when I smoked Galois. I pretend I am in Paris. We will watch a Truffaut movie tonight on Netflix. I will go down on you after the movie. I won't care if I get hard on. I will forget to feed our Peshawala. I am 60 years old and my brother is dead. <laughs>